Since it was formed just 11 months ago, the English Defence League has become the most significant far-right street movement the UK has seen since the National Front in the 1970s. The organisation's leadership claims it is peaceful and non-racist, concerned only with opposing what it terms Islamic extremism. Asians in it, don't like the bloody Asians. But The Guardian found that explicit racism and violence were never far away. It's taking over, aren't they? Yeah. They need knocking down a peg, aren't they? Taking over what? Everywhere. Civilization. They're just breeding like mad. God bless every single person in this country of all religions, creeds, and cultures. And you know what? Even God bless the Muslims. They'll need it for when they're burning in fucking hell. The Guardian spent four months following the EDL around the UK. From January to April, I watched as the movement grew, filming them secretly and in the open, as they gathered in London, Dudley, Bolton and Stoke. One of their leaders told me how excited he was by what had been achieved in just a matter of months. We're only nine months old. You know what I mean? We're only nine months old. And look at it. Only nine months old. It's the biggest street movement ever in England. Whenever there's a problem, people are putting fucking hit the streets, you know what I mean? This is nine months old and look at it. The Guardian did look at it. It found a movement that was growing in strength. A movement that planned a summer-long campaign targeting some of the UK's biggest Muslim communities. The English Defence League was formed in Luton in June last year. It has brought together a disparate group of football hooligans, far-right activists and many who have never been on a political demonstration before. What unites them is a rampant and sometimes violent Islamophobia. January 2010. It's 10.30am on a cold Saturday morning in Stoke and the EDL are gathering at the Reginald Mitchell pub. The police are ready and waiting too. Inside the pub, EDL supporters take advantage of the early bar. As the drink flows, the atmosphere becomes highly charged. After four hours drinking inside the pub, EDL protesters spill onto the streets, attacking police lines. Officers are outnumbered and 17 people are arrested. What we're seeing now is the most serious, most dangerous political phenomenon that we've had in Britain for a number of years. With the EDL protests that are growing week in, week out, um, there's a chance of major disorder and a major political shift to the right in this country. In early March, the EDL converge on London, meeting in a pub near the Tate Britain on the banks of the River Thames. Once again, the police are waiting for them. This time, the EDL are on better behaviour. The Dutch politician and infamous Islamophobe Gert Wilders has been invited to screen an anti-Islamic film at the House of Lords, and the English Defence League has come out in support. This time they are granted permission to march and head from the Thames to Parliament. On the way, they meet with opposition. Groups opposing the English Defence League have faced a campaign of threats and intimidation. Wayman Bennett received this anonymous phone call the day after a counter demonstration in Bolton. You know what, coward? You're a four white vicious coward, cubby bastard. You come here, Birmingham, your mate. You're fucking going to get sorted, boy, okay? You piece of shit. Bennett is head of Unite Against Fascism, a group that staged a number of demonstrations against the English Defence League. 
he has received countless abusive and threatening messages. This one was left on the office phone on 21st of March 2010. It's currently been investigated by the Metropolitan Police. That'd be fascist. You're Al Qaeda, UAF, you remember that? You'll be sorted, motherfuckers. You go find the lines like a coward, you can't come on the street and talk about it. Hold the people behind there because you're a piece of shit. Man, come to Birmingham, you're fucking gonna get sorted, you prick. I actually think that you can see that the situation's hotting up and um, they'll be much more aggressive. They are openly planning to attack um, people, I believe, and I think that something really should be done about this. Journalists covering the rise of the EDL have also faced intimidation. Jason Parkinson has filmed many of their demonstrations. We've seen a lot of, of, of journalists being punched and hit. Um, and s suffering other sorts of assaults as well. Fuck off! Fuck off! Now! Fuck off now! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. What we are seeing is that small groups of far-right activists are latching onto the EDL and trying to use it and direct it in a political way to cause trouble. Um, we've seen Combat 18 people, National Front, BNP people moving in, trying to organise people, trying to divide people and trying to use the EDL as a, as a political fighting force. The EDL is run by a secretive leadership team. The Guardian has requested interviews on several occasions to put these allegations to them, but they have refused to appear on camera. Towards the end of March comes news that a rally is planned in Bolton. More than a thousand people have turned out to oppose the EDL. Keep moving, guys. Keep moving, please. Please. Keep square, keep square, please. There is much more tension in the air today than there was in London. And police make 73 arrests, 54 of them anti racist protesters from Unite Against Fascism, including Raymond Bennett. On the other side of the barrier, the English Defence League arrives in force. The Guardian talks to some of its supporters. It's a backward, the, it's a backward mentality, We're the backward religion, the backward left-wing queers, the, the backward. Nah, blacks and niggers, they're, they're all right, man. But it's the packies, man. Have you always thought like that, mate? Yeah, since being a little kid. It is too easy to dismiss the English Defence League as simply a rerun of previous far-right organisations. It has acted as a lightning rod for people with a range of grievances who appear to be coalescing around a rampant Islamophobia. I pay your student clubs. I pay for your Muslim fundamentalist groups. I'm a patriot, not a racist. Patriot, patriot. I believe freedom of speech which Muslims, Islam, wouldn't allow. And they didn't allow. No, but they wouldn't. I believe in gay rights, I believe in lesbian rights, I believe in women with people to work, I believe in family rights. Is anything wrong with that? No, there's not. As long as I'm standing here, look, I'm putting my heart, I will demonstrate against what you do not believe in. Uh, I want British jobs for British people. The message of Islamophobia can rally groups beyond your traditional white British voter. And, and the EDL has actively tried to galvanise those. Does this mean that the EDL believes in a uh, sort of truly um, sort of pluralist, multicultural society? No, I don't think so. Um, does it show that there are you know, sections of this population that are concerned about Islam beyond the core constituency of the far right? Yeah. Two weeks later, I travel with the EDL supporters for a demonstration in the Midlands town of Dudley. Things got much worse. Posing as an EDL supporter, I spoke to this man, Gurmit Singh, a British born Sikh and one of the EDL's core leadership team. He told me the organisation is planning to target some of the most iconic Muslim communities in the UK. Yeah, Blackwood will be huge. No problem with the Blackwood is like security, right? You know what I mean? 
highly populated North America. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've fucking got massive. They're very villain. Yeah. They don't take fucking much from the people walking out of their you know what I mean? So yeah. there's a big security thing. So once we get over that, we sort of somewhere down there, we'll be going to run. Rather than the places already kicked. Just sell the same thing. Tower Hamlet. Hey, yeah. Tower Hamlet. Hey, nice one. That's going to be a fun one. I mean, Tower Hamlet, you've got East London Mosque. Yeah, yeah. Islamic Forum for Europe. And that's basically the epicenter for fucking. That's headquarters for Islam. Up until now, the police have been able to control these EDL protests. But all we need is for one to go wrong, for there to be a major disturbance, and I think you'll see it spread across the country, you know, in, in a real summer of violence. Next car full of Joe Ads will all pile off and fucking stamp on it. <laughs> it is clear the organisation is aware of its potential to spark serious violence. Barriers break one day, you know, so get through. Yeah, it's going to fucking some murder. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> A few hours later, those predictions appeared to be coming true. After tearing down fencing, hundreds of EDL supporters went on the rampage, and only a huge police presence prevented serious disorder. Many of the EDL demonstrations I attended felt like they were on a knife edge. One serious incident could have led to widespread unrest. Over the next few weeks, the EDL is planning to demonstrate in Newcastle, Cardiff and Dudley.